Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite unabashed gnome gapologist, Gardner the Linux Gamer. I like that. That's a good one. This video is brought to you as always by my gracious Patreon contributors. My top tier singularity members get special recognition at the beginning of each video. So thank you to David Mitchell. David, your support is truly humbling. You saw the title of the video. This video is all about why I love GNOME because you know what? I also love controversy. <laughs> and apparently if you voice your opinion about GNOME on the internet, it just brings out a bunch of people who just hate GNOME. So if you're watching this, just know that I welcome your hatred. No, uh, honestly, honestly, we are better than the comments that were left on my last video. We as a community are better and I expect better of my uh, YouTube comments. So we're gonna try this again. We're gonna do a video about GNOME and if I see one person who unironically calls me an effing idiot, um, I don't know what's going to happen. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, call you out on Twitter uh, for being a bad boy. <laughs> All right, so here are 10 reasons that I love GNOME 3. Number 10, GNOME 3 is focused and uncluttered. So one thing you're going to notice about this list is that it really always comes back to design. I make no apologies for that. Design is one of, in my opinion, the most critical aspects of a user interface and uh, neglecting design or not implementing it correctly or having it clash, uh, different apps clashing with each other or having a ton of inconsistency between apps that's the cardinal sin of our friends in Redmond, in my opinion, and I think that we can and should be better than that. And that's why I think GNOME is so effective and powerful at what it's doing. Many of the apps are designed to take up the full screen. You can focus on what you're doing. And uh, if you're using a GNOME a GTK app uh, that's meant for uh, GNOME 3, well, it ends up being... A, a very simplified and streamlined and focused process. You, you're able to do a lot of things with hotkeys, uh, switching tabs, uh, switching to different view modes in the apps that you're using. It's all very streamlined and straightforward and it makes uh, whatever task I'm trying to achieve that much easier. A prime example of this, and this is probably the only time I'm gonna talk about KDE and I swear this is not gonna turn into a KDE bashing session. Just compare the settings panel in GNOME to the settings monster in KDE, okay? The KDE settings manager uses literally every single conceivable design paradigm that has ever been uh, thought up by the history of mankind and computer interfaces. And uh, it is just an insane, and it's, it's a task of insanity to try and uh, go in and find the uh, setting that you're trying to find. And in GNOME, it is simple and straightforward and easy to use. Um, I don't think that there's a better comparison, a one-to-one -one, apples to apples comparison of GNOME's human interface guidelines and KDE's human interface guidelines, if you can call them that. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about KDE. I think that that is a prime example of the difference of the focusness and the uncluttered-ness of uh, GNOME. It, the settings application is just, oh, it's so perfect, I love it. Number nine. Gnome is stable. I know some people who haven't used Gnome recently are going to scoff at this, but really Gnome is the most stable desktop environment that I have used. And it, recently I have used LXDE, I have used uh, XFCE. I can't say that they're unstable, but I have used uh, KDE and it's not the most stable thing. I, I said I wasn't gonna mention KDE again. I'm done mentioning KDE now, <laughs> but GNOME 3 is super stable, especially 3.32, which is what I'm using on Dargo and on my laptop. Even when an app or an extension crashes uh, and GNOME stays stable and it staves up, and if GNOME itself crashes, it relaunches itself without fuss, and that's commendable in my opinion. Number eight, ubiquity. See, GNOME 3 is everywhere. It's not just uh, uh, one or two distributions running it. It's many of the major distributions. Uh, even if they're like forking it and creating their own theme, which, you know, let's face it, that's what they're doing essentially. Many of the most major and influential distributions uh, are running GNOME 3. Uh, Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, Pop! OS, uh, they're all running GNOME 3. Even the Librem 5 phone is going to be running a, a modified version of GNOME 3. I don't know if it's fair to call it a fork. It, it might be, but uh, it's optimized for mobile. It's called Fosh. 
Um, it's really exciting stuff. I'm super duper stoked for that. And Gnome is is the basis for Cinnamon and for Pantheon, which are two uh, very popular desktop environments in their own right. They, they're more distro specific, but still, I mean, Gnome is everywhere and it's super powerful and it's fantastic. And, and that's why I love it so much. Number seven, upgrades. Now, this is something that happens on occasion. Every six months, I believe, is their release cycle. And, uh, but I always look forward to the new release of GNOME, um, especially being on Manjaro and having uh, the new release within a week hitting my repos uh, and being able to upgrade fast and efficiently. Uh, it makes me super, super happy. Um, if it's the sexy styling improvements or the, uh, the new upgraded workflow or the efficiency increases or even just the brand new features, it's so exciting when your desktop environment gets an upgrade and uh, when GNOME 3 releases, it's always an event and I always enjoy it. Um, I was especially stoked for version 3.32, not just because of um, the high DPI support, which we didn't know was actually going to land in this version until like a, a week before it hit, but also because of the app permissions that are in the settings panel and the, the new icon set, which is Ooh, it's so good. Oh my God. The performance improvements and the enhanced Adwita style. I mean, oh God, Adwita. I could talk hours. I could talk for hours about Adwita. I love Adwita. But the next thing that I'm looking forward to in, in an upcoming release is the uh, greeter, the new login screen. Uh, the login screen, the, the screenshots that I've seen of the new login theme are just, oh my God, they are so pretty. Um, and also I've seen a couple mock-up designs for the new notifications panel and how that's gonna, notifications are gonna be handled in GNOME, which is one of the things that uh, kind of bothers me right now is that notifications um, just don't feel right yet. They don't feel correct to me. Um, and so having new a new revamped notification system in GNOME 3 is going to be uh, just a fantastic uh, and awesome experience. Number six, NextCloud integration. You had to know this was coming. Uh, I can integrate my desktop with my NextCloud instance and by golly, do I just love this. Uh, <laughs> If you go to your settings and you go to online accounts, you can uh, set up NextCloud, which is officially supported right there in the desktop environment. Uh, you can just uh, give it, a, you know, you can create a, an app password in NextCloud, set it up on your, um, on your desktop environment, and then all of a sudden, you not only have all of your contacts and your calendar events synchronized with your desktop, but you also have your web dev support uh, built right into uh, Nautilus and it's it's just mounted right there and you can access all your data and that's just super duper cool now it's not just nextcloud you can integrate with google services or any number of other things even ftp and such but for my money nextcloud is the most relevant and uh and awesome feature uh featured integrated service that you can have so props to that number five the fluent coherent design language um, the human interface guidelines of GNOME are just stellar. They are clear, they're concise, and they are broad enough for just about every use case. Um, and that's something that I feel doesn't get enough credit. Uh, when you look at other human interface guidelines, and I, I'm not going to like bash on other desktop environments, but well, I will bash on Windows. Windows, I don't even know if they have human interface guidelines. Windows is just a mess. Just look at uh, the difference between uh, a GNOME desktop and a Windows desktop, and uh, you start to see the cracks in the design on Windows. I mean, what is this ribbon UI? What the hell is that? The design language is just clear, and everything, and I, I know I've talked about this a little bit already, but, uh, you know, when you go into an app and you want to find something, generally it's available right there for you to use. An app like Geary or Podcasts or Gnome Games, these are apps that uh, that follow the human interface guidelines and allow you to, to get to the content that you want, that you need, that you're looking for. And it's hard to, to see how other desktop environments, um, including the proprietary ones from Apple and Microsoft, it's hard to see how they, they facilitate that ease of use as well as GNOME does. And that's, where I, that's one of the things that I love so much about it. And, and I geek out about design because design is so critically important to accessing the data that you want and you need. Now, there are people who will say that, you know, 
um, being able to customize it to your liking. I can definitely see that if you're the kind of guy that likes to tweak and to, and to have everything accessible uh, within a moment's notice, I can totally understand you preferring that. But for someone who doesn't like to tweak things that much and who just wants things to work out of the box, GNOME is, in my opinion, the best option for that. Number four, extensions. On Dargo, my production machine right here, I use multiple different sound devices every single day. Uh, I, I not only have my um, Yamaha mixing board, but I have you know the onboard the the onboard audio device, and I also have uh, several other audio devices, including uh, a freaking um, PlayStation Four controller, which shows up as an audio device. Uh, this kind of stuff you know, can, can be kind of a headache um, with, when it comes to audio on Linux. Um, and that's why one of my favorite extensions uh, for GNOME is the, uh, what is it called? It's kind of a lame name, uh, Sound Input and Output Devices ex Extension. It's lackluster, but it tells you what it does, right? <laughs> and what it does is actually, it's really nice. Uh, when you click on the, the options menu up in the top right corner in GNOME, you end up with not only a, a volume slider and a microphone slider, but you also end up with uh, input and output devices uh, accessible and you can switch them on the fly instead of having to go into the options menu. And, and I feel like that's really important, at least for me as someone who, you know, like I said, uses multiple audio devices uh, on the daily. Uh, so that's one of the things that I really like about uh, GNOME's extensions is that you can do all kinds of neat little things to just tweak uh, GNOME to your liking. I'm not much of a tweaker, so I really only use uh, one or two extensions. Manjaro comes with a bunch of extensions enabled by default. I actually have turned most of those off because I don't like them. Um, but one of the things that I do like with Manjaro's extensions is the uh, the upgrade indicator, which is up in the top right corner of my screen. Uh, I also have used in the past the sensors extension, which shows the uh, CPU and GPU temperatures, especially when I first built Dargo. And then when I got the Vega card, I wanted to make sure that temperatures were, were normal and weren't like freaking out or destroying, you know, it wasn't getting too hot in there. So I used the, the sensors extension for that. But generally I just like things to work as the, out of the box. But every once in a while, a little convenience tweak here and there that's where I'm at. So uh, basically <laughs> the sound input and output dev uh, device switcher is, is is my primary extension, but it, it's such a robust and powerful API that there's tons of extensions available at uh, extensions.gnome.org. And uh, I am a big fan. So that's number four. <laughs> Number three is the app ecosystem. Now, this isn't GNOME itself, but this is the uh, this is the the community that's surrounding GNOME. To put it succinctly, the app ecosystem is phenomenal. Um, from feed reader to podcasts, GNOME games, Fractal, Geary, Corebird, any of the core applications that come with GNOME as standard, like the contacts or calendar apps the app ecosystem is to die for. And there's nothing sweeter or fresher than using a GTK app on a GNOME 3 desktop. It's something beautiful. It's a work of art when it just comes together and all your apps work and function in a, in a common design language. I geek out about that. I love that. Number one, the workflow. I, maybe this shouldn't be on the list because this is, it's, I mean... Most of this is personal preference, but this is kind of like, this is how I work. This is just how I work. I work in the GNOME 3 workflow. That's what I do. I can't tell you how many times I've been at work on a Windows machine having to do some kind of troubleshooting and I want to switch Windows and I don't have access to my keyboard, you know, right at the ready. So, and I'm using a mouse and I'll just, you know, flick the cursor up to the right corner of the screen. And it takes me a second uh, to realize, oh, I'm not going to open up. I'm not going to open up the activities panel because this is windows and windows is inferior. <laughs> so I end up uh, just feeling dumbfounded for half a second. And I'm like, all right, windows sucks. My workflow is GNOME. I have been working in GNOME three for years and years and years. I've been using GNOME three since like 3.04 or something like one of the earliest versions of GNOME three. Uh, initially I hated GNOME three and I left and I hated unity and I left for Linux mint. Uh, and I went and tried X FCE, but um, 
I got to a point where none of them functioned the way I wanted them to, the way I expected them to, and I went back to GNOME 3. And GNOME 3 is usable and it's awesome, it's stable, I love it, and the workflow is just perfect for me. And number one, the most controversial item on this list, Adwita. I don't know if I'm saying that right, Adwita, Adwita, I don't care. Uh, and also, I don't care if anyone out there hates Adwita, Adwita, I'm just going to say Adwita. <laughs> Adwita is the most beautiful desktop, period. And I'm not talking about the dark variant. The light version of Adwita is the best. <laughs> it's the best. It's just the best. The default desktop look and feel and style of GNOME is the best out of any desktop environment, out of any theme for any desktop environment, it is number one. I love it. The curves, the edges, the subtle use of shadow and gradient, the, the color palette, everything about Adwita is gorgeous to me and it serves to elevate my computing experience. Even beyond what Apple could have ever dreamed of, even at their height, Adwita is the best, most perfect, closest thing to perfect we've ever had for a desktop look and feel, and I love it. I'm sure that there are going to be people out there who disagree with me. So if you disagree with me, let's keep the conversation in the comments civil. Uh, I will be severely disappointed uh, in anyone being a, a, a troll because you know what? I'm just telling you how I feel. And if you can't handle that, well then get out. <laughs> uh, Anyway, I absolutely love GNOME. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at the Linux Gamer. I'm also uh, on Mastodon at gbryant at Um Yeah, this was a fun video to make. I had a lot of fun thinking about all the ways that I love GNOME. And uh, if you disagree with me, let me know. Keep it civil, but disagree. That's totally fine. If you like another desktop environment, that's totally fine. I, you know, I don't have any personal investment in your preferences. And uh, <laughs> so if you disagree with me, I, you know what? That's great for you, my friend. I'm going to let you guys go now. So thank you so much for watching. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon, or you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link down below. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always... Thanks for watching.